Hello, everyone, and welcome to the re-recording of the Commerce Bug screencast. Uh, hopefully, the audio levels will be a bit uh, more sane this time. This will also cover features in Commerce Bug 1.2, which was just released. So let's get started. Um, what Commerce Bug is, is a debugging extension. You'll get this little debug menu up near the top. You may turn this debug menu on or off through the administrative console. There's a commerce bug section. You just uh, show the bug menu right there. Click it. It'll open up. Uh, what you get in this first tab, controller request, is it will tell you the controller class which was used for this request, as well as its uh, file path location, and some information about the module name, controller name, and action name. You will also get the path information. Path information is the actual URL that was used. As you can see, this uses a smart mod rewrite URL uh, for SEO reasons. Path info is the actual URL, so this is useful if you want to get the category ID in this particular URL. If you're looking at a product, get the product ID. Next tab is models, and this will list all the Magento models that were instantiated on the page. Again, class name, full file path to the class. We'll also list the number of times they were instantiated on the page. You can sort by that. You may also sort by the name if you like. Useful if you know the model name you're looking for. So you can see this mage catalog model category had to be instantiated seven times on this page request as opposed to um, some of these others, which were only instantiated once. Next is collections. This is new in Commerce Bug 1.2. If you're not familiar with collections, collections are like PHP arrays, but they are objects, and they always hold model classes. It's how you can think of it as a result set. Again, you will get a class name, a path to the class file, number of times it was instantiated, and you will also get a list of which model is actually inside this collection. Blocks are another useful class to know about. Blocks are what basically the view layer of Magento. Again, class name, path to the class file, number of times instantiated. It will also give you the PHTML file, which can be very useful if you're theming or you're looking for where that one bit of PHTML is that makes it run. Layout, if you're not familiar with Magento, uh, it uses an XML layout system. Um, if you are familiar with it, you'll find this tab very useful. It will list all the handles that were generated for a page, as well as you can view the entire page layout or view the entire package layout for any particular request. Again, very useful in debugging to see what Magento is seeing to see if your changes are being picked up. Class URI lookup. Um, if you go back to the collections tab, uh, Magento identifies models with this uh, URI-like string. What this does is um, you can paste it in the URI string in there and find out which model that resolves to. URIs are also used to identify helpers and blocks and this will list again what it uh, the class it resolves to and it will actually attempt to instantiate the class so you can find out what it's actually resolving to. That's because Magento uses a factory pattern when it's instantiating these classes and sometimes the values are overridden. So this can be very useful to see if Magento is picking up your overrides. It will also work backwards, where you can paste in the class name and find out this is the URI it resolves to. You can also say, I only want to see the model information, or I only want to see the block information, etc. And systems tab, system tasks. Um, allows you to clear the cache from the page so you don't have to go into the Magento admin to do it. This clears Magento's cache. Magento heavily leverages 
caching because it builds up a bunch of large XML trees and it doesn't want to parse them each time. Finally, uh, we're going to go back to this first tab here. There's this uh, curious paste JSON from log text area. What this allows you to do is if you have turned logging on for Commerce Bug, log collected data, yes. In your system.log, you will have this very large JSON string logged. This is kind of what makes Commerce Bug do its thing. So what we are going to do is copy that out of here. Got it. And then if we navigate away, or let's say even on this admin page here. Um, so right now we're looking at this is showing what's going on for the admin request. If you paste the JSON from the log in this box and click render into tabs, we now get the information that came from the log. So this can be very useful in debugging Ajax or, you know, like the one page checkout, things that aren't necessarily going to render the, to the page, but you still want to find out information about the request. Thanks for watching and uh, enjoy your extension if you decide to purchase it which you should, because it rocks. Thanks a lot.